I want to read you an email that I was asked to keep confidential. I've been thinking about this for a long time, but I now believe that reading it to you will go some way to explain why I'm worried about the status of scientific research generally, but especially in the foundations of physics. I received this email about seven years ago after I published a comment in Nature Physics titled Science Needs Reason to be Trusted. In it, I explained how I lost trust in scientific self-correction after I realized how much of what's published in the foundations of physics is nonsense and continues to be nonsense. This email came from someone who I've met a few times but don't know in any depth and who at the time worked at a top institution in the United States. To honor the request of confidentiality, I've removed some details. Hi, Sabina. I'm if you remember me. I'm not using my work email. The topic is a bit delicate and I hope that our conversation will remain confidential. I'm contacting you regarding your recent paper in Nature, which made a lot of noise. First of all, congratulations on a nice paper. If you wanted to attract attention, you managed to do this. Actually, I'd like to ask you next time, think not only about short-term personal benefits, but about the community in general. Do you understand what consequences your publication might bring for our community? What are all these BSM model builders with exaggerated self-opinion going to do afterwards? What about experimentalists who survive hiding inside big multi-TV collaborations? Can you offer them all any decent employment alternatives? Some of them have families and young children. Some of them are already too old to get employment elsewhere. For some of them, academia is the only way to get US visa. If you like, yes, what we created is a bubble, but it helps thousands of those guys and their families not to die from hunger. We all do the same stuff and have some trade secrets. For example, I'm one of the authors of the so-called model. Pretty useless stuff, old refurbished with a couple of new blows and whistles. But if people buy this and it helps them to get grants, who cares? For people who pay us, all we do is just noise. They have zero idea that elementary particles exist. They pay us from public funds, not from their own, and basically pay for something cool, some new crazy hype, which they need either to include into their science spending reports or in case of universities to attract students. Your paper made a lot of noise and most likely will affect redistribution of HEP funds towards other areas, but I doubt that you'll be able to suggest an implement any organizational changes. Also any changes of quality criteria which would demonstrate uselessness of somebody's work will have zero chance of approval. I understand that all what I wrote above might sound a bit harsh, sorry for this, but this is how our society is built and this is not only a problem in the HEP community but also exists in all other areas. My heart is bleeding when I regularly see bright and intelligent persons with in independent ways of thinking, leaving academia or getting kicked out, whereas obedient idiots remain. But there's nothing we can do. Those who get kicked out usually find better opportunities outside of academia. Those who remain in academia accept the rules and enjoy the comfort of academic life. Of course, sometimes there are exceptions, like string theorists Smolin and White, but I doubt you'd like to share their destiny. I'm reading this to you as an illustration, a rare example of somebody else's honest words. I can't prove to you that this email is real, so you'll have to take my word for it. In contrast to the person who sent this email, I don't think that taxpayers are stupid. We're not paying physicists for crazy new hype. We want to see results. And soon, taxpayers will start asking some tough questions. An example. So they told you that this Dune experiment that's being built from some billions of dollars of public funds at Fermilab will tell us why we exist or why the universe didn't disappear. I regret to inform you that it won't do any such thing. Regardless of what the result of the Dune experiment will be, it'll not tell us why the universe contains more matter than antimatter because this question is impossible to answer within the context of our current theories. The matter-antimatter symmetry that Dune is supposedly shedding light on is a pseudo-problem. It's a story that physicists have made up 
that they are now selling to the public because they think that once they have the money, it doesn't really matter if they deliver what they promised. Though, to be fair, I think that some of them are honestly confused about what CP violation in the neutrino sector even says about antimatter. What will the experiment do? It'll measure some properties of neutrinos. What's that good for? It's good for keeping particle physicists employed because some of them have families and it'd be unfair if they had to do something useful for their income, wouldn't it? And has anyone even noticed that the US government spent another $2 billion or so on a new particle collider at Brookhaven? Its purpose is to improve measurements of the quark and gluon distribution inside of heavy ions. What's it good for? You're not supposed to ask. You're supposed to believe that you're too stupid to understand what it's good for. But let me fill you in. It's good for keeping particle physicists employed. Meanwhile, the Chinese are laughing their asses off that you think it makes your country worth defending. That particle physicists have created these bubbles of useless research is not a problem that can be fixed from inside the community. The only way to fix the problem is to stop paying them. I'm afraid that this is exactly what's going to happen. I didn't want this to happen. This is why I wrote my 2017 comment. But at this point, it's too late for them to change anything about it. I've read this email dozens of times, and each time I'm stunned by how condescending it is to all the people who do honest work and whose taxes pay for academic jobs. It makes me sick. And it makes me glad that I no longer have anything to do with this so-called research area that's rotten to the core. If you are one of the many physicists who know full well what nonsense research I'm talking about, but you still keep your mouth shut. If you're one of those who laugh about me because no one believes what I'm saying. If you're one of those who spread lies about me, like that story that I was invited to give a talk at CERN but was afraid to go, did you make that up? I hope it was amusing. But Jesus, use your f brain. Your problem isn't that I'm making noise. Your problem is that you're lying to the people who pay you. Your problem is that you're cowards without a shred of scientific integrity. Your problem is that every bubble eventually bursts. By the way, the reason I now call it nonsense research and no longer bull research is that YouTube flags the letter as profanity and we don't want to be profane on this channel. That would be absolutely terrible. All right, let me know what you think about all this in the comments. There are many reasons why you might not want other people to get your private information. And yes, I have reasons. This is why I signed up to Incogni, who've been sponsoring this video. You see, each time you open a website, it'll try to collect data about who you are and where you are and what other websites you've visited. If you then sign up for a website and fill in your personal details, they can and often do make money by selling your private information to data brokers. Most countries have against that and you can ask for your data to be removed but doing this takes up a lot of time. Incogni automates the process of getting you out of those databases. You sign up and they'll contact the big sinners, request that your personal details be removed. They'll keep on doing that and if you want send you updates about the progress they're making. Like this recent one I got that says they've gotten me out of 151 databases and saved me 100 113 hours of time. I'm glad there's now a simple solution to stop unfriendly people doing nasty things with my personal details. Incogni is super easy to use. You sign up, give them the information they should look for, and they go to work, like within a minute basically. I now sleep better at night, and maybe I can help you sleep better too. If you use my code Zabina or the custom link in the info below, you'll get 60% off of Incogni. That's an amazing deal, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.